Hello everybody and welcome to lesson 16 formulation of assignment problem. The learning objective of uh, this lesson is to formulate assignment problem from the real business problem. That means we are just formulating the linear programming which is called specifically assignment problem from the real practice problem. Before moving to uh, formulating the assignment problem, let's see some points about the assignment problem. An assignment problem is a special form of transportation problem where all the supply and demand values are equal to one. As we discussed earlier, transportation problem is a special type of linear programming problem where there is or which focuses on how to transport, how to minimize the transportation cost from the origin to the destination. It's not necessary just to have a one-to-one -one correspondence there. But here, an assignment problem is a special form of transportation problem. It looks like just transportation problem, but there is a difference because here, the supply and all the supply and demand values are equal to one. Or we can say alternatively, a distinguishing feature of the assignment problem is that one agent is assigned to one and only one task. And one task is only done by one agent. So there is a one-to-one -one correspondence only. There is a one-to-one -one correspondence. The typical application of assignment problem involves assigning jobs to machines or agents, assigning agents to tasks, or assigning salesperson to sales territories, or assigning contracts to bidders, and so on. In all these applications, there is only a one-to-one -one correspondence between the person or the agent and the tasks or maybe the jobs. So there is a one-to-one -one correspondence, a one-to-one -one correspondence. Only a person accomplishes only, or a person gets only one job or a job is assigned to only a single person. It has been used, by the way, efficiently efficiently to place employees at a certain jobs. That means every employee has different performance of accomplishing uh, different tasks. So the main objective of the assignment problem is either to minimize the required time to accomplish the tasks or the tasks or either to minimize the cost required by the employees for accomplishing the tasks. So it has been used to efficiently place employees at certain jobs within an organization. It is a square matrix, by the way, unlike that of transportation problem. Transportation problem may not necessarily be a square matrix, but here it is a square matrix because there is a one-to-one -one assignment. One employee is assigned for only one task, or one task is assigned for only one employee. Due to that, it is a square matrix. It is a square matrix. That is n by n. Let x, i, j equals number of employees. i represent one, two, three. That is the employees. And assigned to the tasks, tasks is represented by the, subs the subscription j. J starts one, two, three. So here there is a, an assignee of, or there is an, a single employee assigned to a single task, or there is an assignment of a single task for a single employee. And the objective function is to minimize the cost or the time required to accomplish the task. And it can be expressed like this. Z equals I start from one to n. This is just for the employees. This is for the employees. And summations of j 
starts from 1 up to n. This is for the tasks. The tasks. Because it is a square matrix, all the employee and the tasks start from 1 up to n. The n value is the same here because this is a square matrix. And Cji times Xij, where Xij represent the tasks to be assigned from i or uh, the yeah the tasks the amount of the tasks assigned from i to j i to j and cij is the cost cij represents the cost to accomplish task i the the cost to accomplish task j by i employee i employee where xij equals 1 if employee is 1 if employee i is assigned to task j if employee i is already assigned to task j so there is no other assignment there is no assignment there is no more assignment because there is only one to one correspondence one to one correspondence so if xij equals 1 otherwise 0 otherwise 0 either 1 or 0 because it's only possible for uh, an employee to be assigned for a single task or a single task is assigned only for a single employee which is subject subjected to the constraints summation of xij equals 1 this for the uh, only one job is done by either person a single person we can't say a single person so the summations of uh, the tasks done by a single person is one summation of the tasks done by a single person is one summation of uh, the xij equals one that means here j represents the tasks or the jobs only one person should be assigned to the j's job the j's job so there is a one-to-one -one correspondence the summation of the tasks assigned to a single person is one or we can say here the summations of employee assigned to a single person equal to one equal to one let's see some important points about the assignment problem as we remember in transportation problem we have m rows and n column and our decision variable will be n times m number of columns times number of rows and here here since we have a square matrix since there is a one-to-one -one correspondence so we have a square matrix and we have n square or n times n decision variables you can see from uh, these examples that there is one two three three employees are there and three tasks are there three tasks are there so there is a one-to-one -one correspondence that means a single employee cannot do more than one job single employee can accomplish only one job so there is a one-to-one -one correspondence so there is n times n or n squared decision variables and the basic variables uh, become n because because here look here the decision variables are three times three so we have nine decision variables by the way nine decision variables and here we have n basic variables because since there is a one-to-one -one correspondence only a one-to-one -one assignment above can do as either of the three jobs and chala can do either of the three kabada can do either of the three jobs so the basic variables will be n that is for this particular example it will be three three and the remaining variable the remaining decision variables will be non basic variables that means n square minus n in this particular case nine minus nine minus one sorry nine minus three nine minus three equals six and six will be the non basic variable non basic variable The number of possibility 
uh, the number of possibility of combinations that means the number of us possibilities of the assignment ababa can do cutting or can do polishing or can do rubbing chala can do cutting polishing or rubbing kabede can also the same so the number of possibility of the assignment is n factorial n factorial that means for this particular example it will be like one times that means three factorial it will be three factorial and three factorial uh, will be one times two times three so it will be three combination sorry six combination six combination six combination six types of possible combination are there for this particular example that means it has three factorial three factorial means one times two one times two times three result is six six is the possible combination by the way if we increase the number of uh, employees and the job so the number of possibility becomes very large very large it becomes very large and if we encounter unbalanced matrix in the case of assignment problem so the first task we have to do is to make it balanced by adding dummy column or dummy row just like we did in the transportation problem because because we can do only for the balanced transportation balanced assignment problem so first the first task for the unbalanced if we encounter unbalanced uh, assignment problem the first task is just to make the unbalanced matrix into balanced matrix by adding the dummy column or row by making the cost to be zero by the, by making the cost to be zero because there is no assignment there is no, in practice on in reality there is no assignment of assigning tasks or jobs from the dummy column or dummy row this is all about the important points of assignment problem now let's move to an example how to formulate the assignment problem from the real business problem this is an example uh, which shows how to formulate the assignment problem from the real business problem formulate the following assignment problem as a linear programming model to minimize the total cost for the tasks the required cost by each employees for each task are given in the following tables it means that above requires 9 timber to for cutting task and 30 for polishing and 50 for rubbing whereas chala needs uh, 70 bir for cutting and 30 for polishing and 7, 40 for, for rubbing and kabeda requires cutting uh, 40 bir for cutting and 8 bir for polishing 70 bir for rubbing our objective is to assign all the tasks that means a single task for a single person and our objective is to minimize the overall cost required to accomplish all the tasks let xij number of units of the tasks j one two three to be assigned for employees i one two three so i stands for the employees and j stands for the number of the units of tasks so to start the solution uh, similar to the transportation problem with the only difference that each task is assigned to each employees that means there is only one to one correspondence in assignment problem which is a distinguishing feature from the transportation problem hence the assignment problem is stated as the objective of the assignment problem is stated as minimization of z because uh, we have cost so it, the objective function will be minimization z equals 19 times x11 that means 19 means the cost which is associated for person one or employee one to, uh, to do or to accomplish the first task the first task so the first subscript one stands for the first employee and the, sec the second subscript stands for the tasks for the tasks 
So 19 is here. 19 is a cost required for the employee. The cost required for the employee. The per unit cost. That means the per unit cost. When we multiply by the amount of tasks, so we get the cost required by employee one to accomplish the first task one. So we have nine decision variables as we discussed earlier because this uh, three by three matrix and to find out the decision variable we just multiply three by three so we we have we have nine decision variables and we have also uh, constraints which is subjected to the constraints so this constraint shows that x11 plus x12 plus x13 which is found in the first row so the number of tasks the number of tasks assigned for employee one employee one because the subscript one indicates uh, the first employee so the number of tasks assigned for the first employee for the first single employee equal to one equal to one because there is a one to one correspondence and the number of uh, tasks to be assigned for the second employee equal to one the number of uh, tasks assigned to be for the third employee is also one also one and those number of tasks the number of tasks assigned for for example here you can see the second uh, subscript is one 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 that means second uh, subscript represents the so can subscript represent the tasks or the jobs so number of employees assigned for doing this first task is the sum of the number of employees assigned to do this task is one one and the number of employees assigned to do the second task is also one one and the number of employees to be assigned to do the third job is also one because there is only one-to-one -one correspondence so from here we can understand that the basic variables here is one that means all either of the three either of the three becomes one and the remaining two uh, become zero variables there they become non-basic variables so you can get the basic variable like uh, from here one will be the basic variable and from here one will be the basic variable and from here we can also get one basic variables and the remaining decision variables become zero that means non basic variables so we have here we have here three basic variables since we have three rows and three columns uh, that's a square matrix and here as you see here as you see there is also a non negativity the negativity means xij equals greater than or equal to xij greater than or equal to zero for i and j which starts from one to one two and three for both i and j this is all about today's discussion that is formulation of assignment problem and we will continue with the next section how to find out the optimum solution for the assignment problem and we will discuss different techniques to solve or to find out the optimum solution for the assignment problem thank you for listening have a good time bye